what we see as fuel, but others would describe as plastic trash. What we do, essentially, is we turn plastic trash into useful resources for people. We provide pyrolysis systems that turn plastic waste into usable diesel and gasoline while also safely disposing of the said waste. ESAR Pyrolysis is an early stage tech startup based in Munich, Germany. I spent an afternoon with their founder, Elias Hasel, at the Technical University of Munich's Venture Labs to learn more about the company. The best thing you can do is to be exceptionally good at something. Action produces information. Startups are like sharks. If they stop swimming, they die. Everyone's wrong. No matter who you are, everyone's wrong some of the time. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. The doers are the major thinkers. Complaining is not a strategy. Keep looking and don't settle. as fuel, but others would describe as plastic trash. And what we do, essentially, is we turn plastic trash into useful resources for people. Um, and how do we do that? We do that by producing machines which work off-grid, are fully energy self-dependent, and can be used by anybody, and we can load them on a pickup truck. And then our machines turn plastic waste directly, wherever you need it, into diesel and gasoline, while also safely disposing of the plastic waste. As a chemist, I would say it's, it's the story of ingenuity, of showing how much humanity has advanced and how little we cared of actually taking care that our advancements don't fuck us over. Plastics. I think it's one of the greatest achievements of humanity. But at some point we lost touch to actually how we, we handle things. Just think about the planet obsolescence. We're literally designing products nowadays that destroy themselves when the warranty runs out. The first plastic that was mass produced was called Bakili. And it was a polymer containing formalin, uh, an actually not that healthy substance, uh, but you know, first telephones, the first electric sockets, all of that was made out of it. And we realized that it's amazing potential. But I would say maybe somewhere in the 70s it turned a bit sour when you know the production just got out of hand, you know, we produced more and more and more, and we wanted more and more and more. And in this area of wealth and general peace, at least for most of the Western countries, was actually affordable to people. So now that we understand the problem, what's being done about it? Elias is still a little critical of the current methods of battling plastic pollution. I, mean, I would say there are a lot of NGOs and just general, some people, um, clean up projects which clean up rivers, which clean up just the environment itself. But still, you know, it's out of the environment, yes. But then you bring it to the local dump site and there they just torch it, you know, they set it on fire without properly burning it. And yeah, you know, this is this is a great problem because they're doing good but only in one aspect. You have to think about the whole process. Okay, but how do we solve it then? Elias explains the science behind the ESAR pyrolysis system. Imagine like this, you have plastic. It's a long chain made up out of so-called monomers. And you stack all of these chain links into a long chain that is called a polymer, that is your plastic. So what we do is we heat it up under the exclusion of oxygen. 
So there's no oxygen in our reaction chamber. So when you get hot enough, those chains rip apart into smaller chains in a very undefined way. So you get a mix of very short, very long chains. So when you get out of the plastic, it's basically crude oil. And we turn it into diesel, gasoline, propane gas, which you can use to run the system with. So the main idea is basically just heating it up so much that the molecules just decide, hey, it's, it's too hot to stay together <laughs> and rip apart and turn into liquid fuels. But all of this isn't quite as easy as it sounds. I asked what technical challenge the company is currently trying to solve. I would say the greatest technical challenge is condensing everything down so much that it's actually viable as a small scale system. If you can only make five liters of fuel a day, it doesn't help you. But we're aiming for around 100 liters a day. So that equals around to 100 kilos of plastic waste. So you have very high throughput in a small system. Um, it's super fun. Um, what is the, what's just the coolest thing about your invention? I would say the process itself, just to imagine, you have, you know, here behind me, right? And you have this shred of plastic and all of a sudden you run it through the machine and you end up with, with clean fuel. I mean, this is just, to me, still so crazy to, to imagine that you turn waste into a resource. Definitely, we need to get rid of fossil fuels in the long run. But we cannot make the people who already suffered the most from our industrialized nations, we cannot make them carry this burden. Um, I think this is also why we specialize so much in you know, those remote areas in, in developing countries, because the developed countries, they have better ways to deal with plastic waste. But for people in those areas, the CO2 emissions of bringing that waste to a proper recycling facility is already more than the fuel that you would burn when you turn it into, with pyrolysis, turn it into plastic fuel. Um, it's, it's, just, it's just the remoteness and the lack of infrastructure, plus all the negative aspects of the plastic lingering there, being burned, being slowly disintegrating into microplastics. And this is just, that's just the pros and cons. So the next chapter is finishing the full-scale prototype, which is around, let's say, 95% finished at this moment. Um, then actually running the first tests and delivering it to the Philippines. And after that, from all we learned from that, we will then develop our MVP, which is the step after the next step, right? And from there, go into small series production. Complex problems require clear solution paths, and a good metric for keeping track of progress is key to reaching long-term goals. So one question that I would like to ask every founder is how do you measure your success? So we measure our success in plastic waste that we get out of our oceans, our environment in general. Because our first market entry with our close partner, the NGO Pro Ocean in the Philippines, is specifically chosen because the Philippines amount for 36% of the global annual plastic waste pollution for the oceans. Uh, the Philippines have a very delocalized population, a lot of small islands, which leads to there being no proper waste disposal system. And what we want to do in the next around 10 years, we want to have at least 1,500 systems operating in the Philippines, because with that number, we could reduce these 36% to zero. This is only possible if you concentrate 
on one key aspect, one key area where you have maximum impact. And um, do you perhaps have a message to anyone who's, who's uh, wanting to start a company? Doing fundamental research. Because there's a lot of startups out there which are sadly, I mean, we all remember Theranos. Mm. So there's this one grain of soul that we put in there to tell people, even though you have a great idea, please check it. Do the science. Do the science. I think that's a great note to end on. Thank you very much if you've made it this far. This has been the first episode of many to come in a series about European tech startups. So feel free to come along for the ride and let me leave you with some final words. Some people think that the ones who dream about the future, the ones who hypothesize, the ones who theoreticize are the ones who have hope. But the truly hopeful ones are the ones who commit to those dreams. The ones who believe enough in themselves and those around them that they are willing to risk it, to take a chance. And so I strongly believe that our collective futures will be built by the ones who explore, the ones who learn, the ones who inspire, the ones who build, the ones who act, the ones who do, the ones who hope. Mm -hmm.